when building a PC, the question has always been, how much RAM do I need? Do I need 32 gigabytes with DDR5 or 64 gigabytes? Which one's gonna give me the most FPS and the best performance? DDR5 has been around for a while now and it is getting really good. We are getting insane speeds. Some people are able to accomplish 8,400 plus megahertz on their RAM daily stable now. This is all due to Hynix 8i, the best DDR5 you can get for gaming now. But it originally started out in just 32 gigabyte kits like the one I have here, but now there's 64 gigabyte kits here. And this makes me wonder, which one should you buy for competitive gaming? Now as you know what you're thinking, why is the amount of RAM going to really be affecting my FPS? Now, this isn't just pure, oh, this has double the amount of RAM, so this is two times faster. No, the difference between these is this is a dual rank kit of DDR5. So the way you can tell it's a dual rank is if it has memory chips on both sides of the RAM. So as you can see here, looking at this stick, you can see memory chips right here at the top. And if I flip it over, there's well on the top. On this single rank stick like I have here, it is just on one side and nothing on the bottom. I'm not going to go into depth onto dual rank versus single rank, but a big deal and one of the main benefits of having dual rank is that you do get a slight benefit in copy speeds. If you want to, you can go look up and research dual rank versus single rank after this, but we're just going to be going after the pure FPS numbers. Now, both RAM kits were tuned to the max. My single rank kit was tuned to 7800 CL36 on my Z690 Dark, and my dual rank sticks were tuned to 7200 CL34. I as well tested my single rank sticks at the exact same time as my dual rank to see, okay, what is the true performance difference between single rank and dual rank in games? Benchmarks tested were with the synthetics we did IDA64 and Intel Memory Latency Checker just to see bandwidth. For games, we did Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 benchmark at 1080p low competitive settings, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p ultra ray tracing, Fortnite at 1080p low, Rainbow Six Siege as well at 1080p low using Vulkan, Rift Breaker using DX11 with the standard settings and Shadow of the... All of these tests were done at 1080p. Now, why am I doing 1080p? 1440p is the future and I 100% agree, but to truly show memory differences, I wanted to use the lowest resolution that most people will use today. So with 1080p, it's gonna become more CPU bound and more latency bound, showing a bigger difference in FPS. Other parts of the system were my RTX 4090, 13900K, fully overclocked. If you want your PC to be maxed out and overclocked, just like mine, make sure you hit that link down below. For my service for $100, you can get the highest FPS possible. No one can get you higher FPS than me, guaranteed. But let's get right into the benchmarks now. Is dual rank or single rank faster? 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes? Or even, am I going to be seeing a benefit or a loss with more RAM? Because some people do need it. Let's go. Starting out here with Ida 64's memory benchmark, looking at the bandwidth here. So 7800 CL36 wins across the board. The highest copy, highest write, highest read, and lowest latency. This is definitely a benefit here. This is something you'll see with, with single rank is you're able to push the frequency higher so you can get slightly higher bandwidth and lower latency as well because you're able to tighten the timings or you're just able to go past that wall of latency just because you can go so much faster. 7200 CL32 um, single rank actually gets about the same bandwidth and latency as my dual rank sticks. The only thing you can see, and this is something I talked about earlier, is that copy is four gigabytes a second faster on my dual rank. So this is kind of where, especially on older gens, the copy actually did benefit a little bit. But if you're frequency limited on your motherboard, dual rank here seems fine and actually probably seems like a better idea. But let's check with um, Intel Memory Latency Checker. Here is Intel Memory Latency Checker and single rank once again just goes absolutely blows my dual rank 7200 and 7200 single rank out of the water S single rank and dual rank honestly basically tie around here you know the dual rank has lower bandwidth has lower latency so yes there's a trade-off there but let's actually see how 
what's a better game to check than rift breaker and as you can see the single rank is winning so the highest frequency here is winning 7800 but when you look at the lows my 7200 single rank does actually have some problems it does slightly lose in the lows by about four to six fps nothing insane but those 0.1 percents do suffer a bit single rank and dual rank is basically neck and neck here you can call these run to run variances they're pretty close single rank and dual rank are tied here shadow of the tomb raider benchmark and single rank 7800 is once again winning with 500 fps it is getting a 20 fps win in max fps which is honestly insane the lows here are basically the same dual rank actually does lose here which is very interesting but in minimum f sorry in the minimum fps dual rank lost average fps they all are basically the same with single rank getting a slight little improvement here nothing much to talk about here cyberpunk 2077 reminder this is with ultra rtx just trying to see does a memory really affect the ray tracing experience and when looking at this the average fps is the exact same on all three of these the max fps does come out with a win from dual rank but that minimum fps is the absolute worst and you will notice the difference between a 70 fps low and 100 fps low those two are insane the single rank here guess does have a slight benefit maybe it doesn't like all that ram or it doesn't really fare with memory bandwidth such as copy being higher so for this one definitely want to be on single rank rainbow six siege and once again the exact same thing is shown here as was with cyberpunk the average fps is about the same with the max fps coming from dual rank which is honestly insane but that minimum fps sucks i don't know why but single rank consistently was winning with very high, much higher lows now i know 700 fps minimums are still really good but it's over 100 fps higher with single rank and even 7200 is putting up numbers against 70 7200 itself single rank is honestly insane and kind of shows hey when you just tune down your ram a little bit you can get the same fps as a higher frequency modern warfare 2 benchmark and average fps is the exact same pretty much everything on this benchmark is the exact same so we're just gonna write this off as in call of duty modern warfare 2 you can use whatever kind of ram config you want and get the exact same fps finishing off the benchmarks here with fortnite and as you can see average fps here is about the same they're all 770 or higher you're not going to feel a difference between 772 and 782 fps and if you are that's insane lows here are about the same as well so as you can see oh look you're getting maybe a four fps variance here it's pretty good in 0.1 percent and in the one percent you're getting about a 10 fps difference with dual ranks slightly losing against single rank both configs but for all these games you will definitely get the exact same gaming experience but which one should you buy dual rank or single rank now that you've seen the benchmarks which one should you buy now as i said these are not XMP profiles that were done. These are fully tuned overclocks here done by me to make sure that I get the highest performance possible. Now let's go over time required. The 7800 profile took a couple of days to get stable and it took a lot of troubleshooting. The 7200 profile took me an hour and then I spent another hour tightening just to see, oh, how tight can these go? These took significantly less effort to get running that's honestly the most insane thing and i think that definitely gives a value proposition here do you value your time are you okay with spending more money but you can spend more time gaming by not having to spend as much time tuning for me wanting the absolute highest fps and seeing the benefit that some games have in the lows with single rank i am going to be sticking with single rank ram gets it's also pretty cool just to say hey i have really high fast ram it's always fun to say but let's say you're on a budget and you're like oh i can't go super high i can't buy a super nice 800 dollars z790 apex buy a cheap board damn gigabyte motherboard get some 2x16 or even if you need that high ram such as maybe your video editing or you're doing some professional work you can get a kit like this overclock to 7200 
have the exact same gaming performance as someone who's fully tuned their PC, gone extreme speeds. That's a big deal. I'll leave a link down below, affiliate links to some RAM I'm gonna recommend, some single rank, some dual rank, CPUs to buy, and really good motherboards for you guys. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to talk to the community more and join, hit the link down below, join the Discord. Awesome. I even got a little subscription now where you can support me directly and you can even learn how to overclock yourself, including, yes, Hynix ADI. But hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Peace.